This problem here asks us to decompose vectors into a component along the x and y axis, but more importantly, to show and express the answer in vector component form, or what I call unit vector notation. And the unit vector notation involves these funny looking things, i hat, j hat, k hat, right? Instead of a regular vector where we have an arrow on top, we have these funny hat things. And that denotes that they're what we call unit vectors. What's unit about them is that they have a length or magnitude of one, and ironically, uh, unitless. So that they represent just the direction, and we can multiply any kind of number in front of it to make it a vector of the appropriate length pointing in that direction with any units that we're multiplying with. So what direction do they represent? By convention, the i hat component always points along the positive x direction. The j hat always points towards the positive y direction, and the k hat always points towards the positive z direction. In this case, the x and y is defined for us very conventionally, positive x to the right, positive y to the upwards on the page. But defining these unit vectors allows us to kind of rewrite and express using notation-wise the way how we've always broken down vectors into x component and y component, but we're going to do it in a way that's algebraically consistent with what we know about vector addition, such that we can continue to be algebraically consistent when we do vector addition, and more importantly, when we do vector products later in the course. When we do dot product and cross product, these i, j, k things will be indispensable. So far, it just seems like we're just rewriting things in a funny way, but once we get to the dot product and cross product, they will be very, very helpful. So that is why I want you guys to get used to it starting now. The actual question, of course, uh, in the textbook has like six of these, and I'm only just going to do these two because it's more the same thing. So as I was alluding to earlier, as we break down a vector along these given x and y axes, you know, we get something in the x direction and something in the y direction. And in previous courses, you may not have these ijks, and you might just call these x component, y component, and treat them separately. But now that we have the i and j, we can say that this horizontal vector here is really just some number, a x, multiplied by the i hats. So it points in the positive x direction with the appropriate length. Similarly, uh, the y component is this number a y, but pointing in the positive y direction. So we multiply by j hat. And then you can see that the overall vector is just the sum, head to tail, head to tail, of these two x and y vectors. So that's why we can represent the a vector as this bit with the horizontal plus this bit in the vertical, all consistent with what we know about vector addition. And this also helps us remember that we can't just add these two things like numbers because they're multiplied by different letters, right? Just good old algebraic rules. Now, if you actually get some numbers, uh, we do what we always done, which is to treat this like a rango triangle. So we use trigonometry. So ax as a number, these are just lengths, of course, is the magnitude of a, which is given. In this case, we're given this angle. So we have cosine 30. You get the x component. Sometimes it gets sneaky and give us this angle instead. So just be careful and draw out the triangle every time. But in this case, it is in fact cosine 30 for the x. And we know that this is 10 without any units. So punching in the calculator, making sure it's in degree mode, because it's 30 degrees, is 8.6602. Ay, similarly, would use the sine. So sine 30 gives us exactly one half, so that's 5. Thus, to represent A, break them down along those given axes, we would write that A is equal to, let's just keep three non-zero digits, 8.66 i hat plus 5.0 j hat. All right, and just looking at this, you will know that the x component is 8.66 in size, and the y component is 5.00 in size. For vector C, it's pretty much exactly the same thing, only that now we have 
one of these components pointing in a negative direction. How do we treat that? Just the same as always. We find out again using the wrangle triangle, treating them as length, so magnitudes everywhere, and seems like they're giving us this angle. So again, x is cosine 60, which is exactly a half of the 12, so that's 6. And then there's a sine 60, so that's going to be 10.392, right? This is just size, right? But when we come time to package it together, we will then say we have this horizontal bit, which is length is 6. Actually, let's make that 6.00 just to be consistent in the i-hat direction or positive x direction. Sometimes we use that quite interchangeably. Plus, the length is 10.4, but it's pointing not in the positive j-hat direction, but the negative j-hat direction. So we put the negative right there. And that's the answer. Just a little extra, if you want to represent these things with units, say um, the C actually has a unit of meters, let's say, what will happen is the 12 meters would show up here, giving this meters, that would have a meter, and then that would have a meter. And so since they both have meters, what we commonly do would be to put a bracket around here and then put the units at the very end. So right now, it still seems like it's just a funny way to package it, but it does give us algebraic consistency as we move on to uh, vector addition even. Helps us remember to keep the x and the y separate because they're multiplied by different letters. And then moving forward, we will use these more extensively when we deal with, again, dot products and cross products. So hopefully um, you can get started getting used to these notation starting now.